In this video, we'll be going over how to count sig figs, or that's an abbreviation for significant figures. Uh, at the very beginning of the video, we're going to cover uh, very briefly uh, how to put numbers into uh, scientific notation. So, um, so to change numbers into scientific notation, uh, we move the decimal so that only the ones place shows. So what that is saying is we want the number to look like this. So these I'll draw these empty boxes and just imagine numbers being there. So when you're putting a number into scientific notation, you want your result to look like this, okay, with just one number right here in the ones place. Okay, uh, followed by how many ever decimals the question may specify. Uh, so, and, and then it'll look like this, times 10 to the some number, some number up here. And it totally depends on, you know, like how big or small the number is. So, uh, first off, if you have a, um, if you, for small numbers, or let's go with uh, large numbers first. So, for large numbers, if you want to put it into scientific notation, you move the decimal. You move the decimal uh, left. Because remember, our strategy is to make it look like this. So you want to move the decimal left so that, it, so that it looks like that, so that only the ones place is showing. You move the decimal left. Um, and while you're moving the decimal, count with your pencil like how many spots you're moving it. Um, and then that number, whatever your count is, uh, and so with, so and, I don't think I need a comma, and the number of times, you moved the decimal, um, this becomes your uh, positive exponent, the number of times that you moved the decimal. So, uh, so here's a quick example. Here's a quick example. Uh, let's say you have the number 32,700,000. And you don't want to write that whole number out. So we assume the decimal is right here at the, at the end of the number. And since this is a large number, we're moving the decimal left. Okay, so it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. My pen just slid too far. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's a 3 there. So your decimal goes right there. Okay, so this number, rewriting it, and we're going to drop these uh, the leading zeros right here. Um, so to rewrite it, we're going to write 3.27, uh, and we counted seven times that we had to move the decimal, so it would be times 10 to the seventh power, and that's 32 million, uh, 700,000. Okay, so for uh, that's for large numbers. For small, for fractions, numbers less than one but greater than zero. So for fractions, uh, you move the decimal, because again, we want to make it look like this up here. So to get it to do that, a small fraction number, you're going to have to move the decimal to the right. And just like the previous example, um, the number of times you move the decimal, number of times you moved the decimal, this is becomes a this becomes a negative this becomes a negative uh, exponent all right so here's a quick example of that if you have this number 0 0.00000 uh, 3901 and we want to write this in scientific notation so to get it to look so to get it to look like this uh, we need to move the decimal all the way over here so that's one two three four five six times and that we move it to the right to get just the ones place showing so 3.901 
3.901 times 10 to the negative 6. So it becomes a negative, your exponent. Okay, so that was just a quick thing on a scientific notation. Um, let's move into uh, significant figures. So uh, to uh, so to count significant figures, we're going to use what's called the Atlantic Pacific Rule. So if a decimal, so if you're looking at a number and you're trying to figure out where you um, where you want to round the number. Uh, so these, these set of rules describe how you round a number. So sometimes you'll plug numbers into your calculator and uh, the answer you get will be this long number that takes the entire display of the calculator. And so you wouldn't want to write that whole number. So where do we round the number off at? Um, it's governed by uh, these rules, um, rules that govern um, what are called significant figures. Some of those numbers that you're looking at on the display in your calculator are uh, what are called significant numbers. Here's an example. So let's say you're flying in an airplane uh, and the captain of the airplane uh, says, okay, you can now get out of your seats. We're now at a cruising altitude of um, 32,000 feet. So he says we're at 32,000 feet above ground, above the ground. Okay, and that's the cruising altitude. So does the pilot take a tape measure and drop it out of the airplane and then actually measure this number? No, of course not. That's ridiculous. So he doesn't he doesn't do that or, or she could I guess be a, a woman pilot. So do do they actually know that it's 32,000 feet exactly with it, like they actually measured it? So no. So out of these out of these numbers, we know that two of them actually mean something. These zeros don't mean anything because we're not really sure about those. So these are these we call uh, uncertain. These we call uncertain. These uh, trailing zeros. And um, the pilot would be fairly certain about the first two numbers, um, but not these. Okay, so they have like instrumentation that uh, would probably estimate this value. Okay, of how high they are above um, sea level. So. Uh, that's measurement is what governs where you round a number off. So you you, you can only be um, sh as sure about the your number as um, how precise your instrument is. So if you have a scale, um, like you step on a bathroom scale and you weigh 120 pounds, okay, um, the scale may not show um, the tenth place. It may just drop that number. So that's the number that the scale is uncertain about, so it doesn't show that number. Okay, so you might be 120.1200005589. Who knows, right? The scale is not that precise, so it just drops that number off. So we say that that number right there is uncertain for, this, for the way the scale measures it. So um, that, that's, that's the theory behind significant figures. So it just gives you a set of rules and tells you where to round a number off. So that we don't have to write the whole thing like from your calculator. So if a decimal point is, um, and uh, there's a mnemonic to remember this is called the Atlantic Pacific Rule to remember how these rules work. If a decimal, well, you're looking at a number. If a decimal point is absent, the A for absent means um, Atlantic, in which refers to the Atlantic Ocean. This will make sense when I do a couple examples. Um, if a decimal is present, you start counting digits from the Pacific side of the number. Okay, so let's draw. Uh, this is supposed to be the United States. Let's make Florida here. Okay, whatever. All right, so here's the uh, Pacific, and here's the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. And here's here's what you're counting. You're counting. Um, you count the first non-zero and everything after. And I think this will make more sense when I start doing a few examples. The first non-zero number. The first non-zero. I should have wrote the word number here. The first non-zero number and everything after. So example one. 
um, let me write a example here 1.256 okay and uh, we look at this number and we ask is a decimal point present on this number yes it's right here there's a decimal point present so we start counting from the Pacific side of the number so here's the Pacific side of the number and we ask where is the first non-zero so we look at this number right here so we look at this number right here and we see that it obviously it's not a zero so we just take this bullet point literally it says count the first non-zero and everything after to tell how many of these numbers are significant so this is not a zero so it counts and everything after also counts so this is one two three four so this number has one two three four significant figures and I use the abbreviation SFS so I say this number has four sig figs and sometimes I, I ev abbreviate even further and I call it um, SFS okay so let's look at uh, some more examples example two so we have 0 0.00201 is a decimal point present yes it's right there so we start counting so take your eyes and then start over here. So you want to look at, that's an I. So we start looking at uh, the number from the Pacific side. Is this a zero? I mean, sorry, is this, is this not a zero? No. Okay, that sounded weird. This is not a zero, so it doesn't count. Okay, so you only count the first non-zero. So these don't count, doesn't count, doesn't count. Aha, that's not a zero, so it counts. So we begin counting here. So it's one, two, three. So this number has three sig figs, that number. Okay, a couple more examples. It takes some practice, like most things. So example, when you first see them. So example three, this is the cruising altitude, 35,000 feet. Okay, so is a decimal point present? No, the decimal point is absent. I do not see a decimal point. So we need to take our eyes and start counting in this direction from the Atlantic side. So is this a zero? It is, so it doesn't count. This doesn't count either. Neither does that. So we start counting here. This is the first non-zero is the five. So one and two. So this number has two significant figures. And back to, the, back to our uh, airplane pilot, and uh, he or she is sure about the first two, but not the last three digits. Okay, so um, so that and then uh, and the the technical way to do that and count it is using this Atlantic Pacific rule. All right, so moving on, one more example. Uh, try to come up with something a little bit uh, a little bit weirder, a little bit more weird. So we have. This number, 0 0.32, and then four zeros, two, zero, one. So, and again, we to apply this rule, we first ask, is the decimal point present? Yes, it is. So we're going to count from the Pacific side. This is not a zero, so it counts, and everything after counts. So one, two, three, even that zero, even though it's a zero, it counts because we're taking this statement literally. So because the three and the two counted, so three, four five six seven eight nine every all these digits are significant so this says nine sig figs all right so let's move on uh, to a couple more examples so this one says write each of these in standard scientific notation and round off each of the following to three sig figs all right so let's give this one a shot Okay, so it says write each in scientific notation. We're going to do this first. So do that first, and then we're going to do apply the second thing. So we're going to round it to three sig figs once we get it in scientific notation. So then do this secondly. All right, so scientific notation. This is a fraction. It's less than one, greater than zero, and we want to make it just show the ones place, the decimal to the right of the ones place. So one two, three. So this is 9.876 times 10 to the negative third, since it's a small number. 
So we want three sig figs. Now our decimal point is here. So we count from the Pacific side. So this counts one, two, and three. This is the third sig fig, this number. Okay, and to apply rounding rules, we use the number after it. So if it's uh, if it's um, if it's five or greater, we use we it, the number in question uh, rounds up. So this is uh, six, which is greater than five. So we're going to round that seven to an eight. So rewriting this, we'll write nine point eight eight times ten to the negative third. Okay, and then we could double check our work. We we'll say do do I have three sig figs? Uh, one, two, and three. Yes, I do. So this is correct. We applied both of these um, things that we're supposed to that it's asking us to do. All right. So uh, now let's get this one in scientific notation. So here's three spots. Three. There's six, seven, eight. So five point four three two times ten, and this is a large number, so it's going to be a positive exponent eight. So our third sig fig is going to be that three right there. So decimal point is present. Count from this side. One, two, three. The third sig fig is the three. This is lower than five, so we're going to keep that three the same. So rewriting 5.43 times 10 to the eighth. And I have three sig figs, like it says. All right, so this one, one, two, three, four, five. So rewriting it, we have 6.997 times 10 is a fraction, so our exponent's negative. Uh, and I, I chose this one on purpose to, just to play with the rounding rules a little. Our third sig fig is that. This is greater than 5, so it's going to round that 9 to a 10, which rounds this one, which is also a 9, which rounds this one. So how do I show three sig figs? You actually show the zero, so we write 7.00. To the negative fifth. Oops, didn't mean to change slides. So um, ask again, do I have three sig figs? One, two, three. The first non-zero counts and everything after, even though these are zeros. So this is correct. All right, so now for uh, your turn to do a couple examples, and these are them. Okay, so I'll leave this up for a second. Um, this is kind of like uh, how many sig figs are in the following numbers? This is kind of like the the first four examples I did when I drew uh, the uh, United States. Um, so you're just counting sig figs. That's all you're doing on these. And then on these, these are just like the ones I just did. So on these ones, remember to do this first. Put it in scientific notation first. And then do this. And then uh, try to get it to three sig figs. Do that second. Okay, that's the end of the video.